Hello everyone, I'm Mwok to Tech Block. Today we are going to be going over a lot of the camera gear that I've picked up over the past half a year or so to help improve the quality of these videos. This includes tripods, sliders, microphones. Most recently, I've picked up a massive light bulb that is going to be going inside a soft box. You're going to put like this sheet over the over top of the light bulb using like this thing. I'll show you in just a moment. We're going to be building a whole light box and I've currently got one pointed at me right now, which is literally like right here. It's this massive like studio light thingy. It's really cool and it's going to help improve the quality of these videos. As you can probably see right now, my face is like lit up. It looks dope. And uh, this light box it only cost me, well, two of these actually only cost me £45. And it's really, really going to improve the lighting in the room, especially when I'm making videos as you never want like low light footage because then there's going to be a lot of noise in your footage and it's just not going to look very sharp. It's going to look pretty bad. So having these lights here is going to really help improve the quality of these videos. And if you're watching this video and you're also a YouTuber yourself or you want to become a YouTuber in the future or you just like recording videos for fun, uh, feel free to check out the links in the description down below to everything I'm going to be talking about in today's video. And uh, as always, I use the Genius Link service. So if you are in the UK, it'll take you to the Amazon.co.uk store. If you're in the US, it'll take you to the Amazon.com store and so on and so forth for all other countries. Now that's been said, let's go ahead and build the uh, massive studio light for my room. So we have a little tripod here and this is very easy to set up. Simply like loosen the little twisty thing here. Then, trust me, it's really easy to set up. Uh, you just push this down and this will expand out and it should look something like this. Then I'm going to undo another, uh, okay, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I'm going to undo this thing. This will expand all the way up here. This should be tall enough. And then what we'll do is we'll take this part, which is the actual like outer thing of the softbox. So this will go on top of the tripod and simply screw in just like this. You just want to make sure that it's actually quite stable as that is quite important. And then we have the uh, inside of the light box right here. What you want to do is you want to take this circular bit and put it on the uh, light socket, just like that. Then take your enormous light bulb and screw it in to the light box. There we go, that's all screwed in. And finally, take this white sheet that came with it and uh, this will go over top of the light box and there are some velcro straps on each side uh, just to keep the uh, white sheet in place so let's just wrap this around there we go it's stuck onto the velcro on all sides and there you go you've built a light box now the one problem that i found with these light boxes is that the cable isn't very long so just make sure that there's a wall socket available nearby to power your light box so there we go. There's even a little switch on the back of the light box, allowing you to turn it off and on very easily. I'm going to be upgrading these light boxes to smart light boxes by picking up a pair of TP-Link smart plugs from Amazon. They're very, very cheap and they'll allow me to control both the light boxes via my Amazon Echo that I have on my desk right here, as well as an app on my phone. So that's the next step for me. I'll pick up some smart plugs in the next couple of weeks and I'll upgrade these to smart light boxes. Right, so that's pretty much everything about my new lighting setup. Let's go ahead and talk about some tripods. Right, so this is the tripod that I've been using for around half a year now. It is from a company called Photo Pro. They're very budget friendly and they got a bunch of cheap stuff on Amazon. And cheap doesn't always mean like bad quality. It's just budget friendly. And uh, I didn't really want to spend like 100 or 200 pounds on a tripod, especially for my first one. So I picked up the Photo Pro Digi 3400 Pro tripod for around £25 on Amazon. And for the money that you pay, this is a pretty good tripod in my opinion. It can fold up into this tiny little package right here, or it can expand into an enormous tripod. And it can fold away nice and quickly as well. So here we go. This is the full size tripod. It's pretty big. I'll leave the exact dimensions of it in the description down below. And if this isn't tall enough for you, there's even another way to make it taller. So. If we unscrew this little screw here, we can <laughs> make this tripod even taller. So I think this is roughly like maybe a 1.5 meter tripod. Buying an actual tripod for the channel was a very, very good investment. And I'm very happy that I did. And not only have I bought one of these, I've actually got a second one that I'm currently using to record this video on. I do plan on buying a better tripod in the next couple of months, I think. But for now, the Photo Pro Digi 3400 
is a very, very good tripod, especially for the price. I also have this slider right here from a company called Newer. Now, I bought this a couple months ago and I realized I couldn't really mount my camera on there. So I also picked up this ball head from a company called Newer, which is a, the exact same company that made the slider as well. So the way these two work is I simply screw the ball head onto the slider right there. It's pretty much as simple as that, really. I mount my camera on top of this ball head and it even allows me to kind of like rotate it around and stuff. It's pretty simple. And I mount my camera on there. I push it a little bit. It was just slide for me. And yeah, that's about it. That's how you get like a cool sliding shot in a video. I don't really use this slider that often, but whenever I need to record a sliding shot, this is what I'll be using. A couple of months ago, a viewer commented on my video and told me to upgrade my microphone. And uh, they suggested I pick up a lavalier microphone. When they commented that, I had no idea what a lavalier microphone even was. So I jumped on Google, I found out this is what a lavalier microphone is. It clips onto you, or at least most of them do, I think. And um, in the past, I'd used to record all my audio and all my videos using this microphone right here, which is my Audio Technica AT2020 uh, microphone, which is, I guess, mainly used, or its main purpose is to be used for voiceovers. And what I was doing is I'd be walking around my room speaking to the camera, and the audio levels that this would pick up would always be different, depending on how far away I was from the microphone. So that was definitely a problem, and you would definitely notice that the audio levels would increase and decrease throughout the video, depending on how far away I was from the microphone, which wasn't ideal and that was definitely a problem that needed rectifying. So luckily, one of you left a comment and uh, I ended up picking up a Rode Lavalier microphone. This exact one is the Rode SmartLav Plus. Uh, link in the description down below to this microphone. It's, I think it goes around £45 on Amazon or £50 on Amazon, but nevertheless, it's still pretty cheap for a microphone, I guess, and the audio quality is good. It plugs into your smartphone or maybe some other like audio recording device. I'm currently just using my iPhone X right here. I've got the voice memos app open. You just hit record and that's it really. It's as simple as that. It's just plug and play and the audio quality is good. The way I actually export the audio files from my phone onto my PC and sync it up with my Adobe Premiere timeline and stuff is pretty simple. All you gotta do is you gotta plug your phone into your PC from there, in my case, iTunes will turn on and I have to sync up all my audio files from my phone with iTunes and it will like export the files onto my PC. I'll find the audio file that I need in the file explorer. From there, I'll take the audio file, I'll put it into Adobe Audition and I'll convert the format from M4A to .wav. So then I'm gonna export it, I'm gonna put that exported file into Audacity. From there, I'll apply some noise reduction effects, some normalization and then equalization settings in that order. Then I'll export that file, I'll throw that file into Adobe Premiere, manually sync it up with the audio recorded on this camera, and that's it really. Uh, it might sound like a complicated process, but it really isn't. You don't really have to wait for the exports or anything, they're just instant as it's an audio file. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty simple process, it might sound quite lengthy, but that's mainly because I'm recording them on an iPhone, and uh, you got to open up iTunes and then convert the file format. It's annoying, but you know, it is what it is. But that's pretty much all I want to talk about for my audio setup and how I get the audio files from my microphone onto my PC. So yeah, there we go, that's been covered. Let's go ahead and cover the camera that I'm currently recording this on. Right, so this is my camera that I use to record just about every single video on this channel with. So it is the Canon G7X Mark II camera, and it is my first ever camera that I've bought. I do plan on upgrading in the next half a year or so, if not like a year. It's a very, very good camera. It shoots 1080p, 60fps. It is a very, very popular camera amongst YouTubers and vloggers especially, thanks to the flip out screen right here, allowing you to preview the footage live without any problem, which is very, very useful. The camera itself is absolutely tiny. It can fold up into this tiny little package and it's very, very portable thanks to that. And if you ever want to like flip the screen out and see a live preview of yourself, you can do that. And there's also a ton of cool settings that you can play around with, such as the aperture, the ISO, the shutter speed, and like there's tons and tons of settings on this camera that I probably don't even know how to use. As I'm still pretty new to like all this camera stuff and camera tech in general, I'm still learning how to use most of the settings on this camera myself, but I have learned a lot. And uh, keeping the ISO on auto, seems to be a, a good idea as I don't really have to manually adjust it anymore. It's just always like almost perfect, I guess. So yeah, that's my camera setup. I've had this for around half a year now and I'm very happy that I picked up an actual camera. 
to record things on. I'm gonna stop recording on my iPhone 10 right now and switch back to the camera. I think that's gonna be it for today's video. I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video, including all my camera gear, my audio gear, as well as my new lighting setup in the room. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in another one soon. Goodbye.